Hello and welcome to another Living Oracle Divination reading. Today we are using Divine Dog Wisdom Cards as well as the Trionfi della Luna by Patrick Valenza Tarot. We'll also use the charms and the dice. Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, Group 4, Group 5 and the timestamps are in the description box below. Hello group one, I've gone ahead and pulled your charms as well as your dice. The dice says far. We have what appears to be a clock. Um, let's see how that would be for you. Three, six, nine, twelve. So there's a clock which indicates time. So maybe something you're asking about is far in time, far into the future. We have a moose head. Um, it's interesting because when I see this, I see maturity and strength and grace and elegance. And it also represents a quarter, which is four, right? So maybe four months, four hours, because we have the clock to do with that. We have the uh, 2007, that year might be important for you. But also if you add two plus seven, in 2007 you get nine i feel like there's something wrapping up completion yeah let's see what else and this is a moose, uh, the uh, moose head or the deer head that actually could be either it might it kind of even looks like an elk this has ancestor and wisdom energy for me and then we have the salamander of creativity and of um, desire and passion and energy physical energy as well as transformation, regeneration. What do we have here? Harmony. Get on key. Okay, so something might be a little, I'm just going to grab the deck because I haven't used this deck before, but I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. So I feel like something might be out of, out of harmony in your life. Seeking harmony is less about doing and more about being, perhaps beginning with stopping to listen for notes within yourself that have been drowned out for a while. It may be that when you do finally pay attention to these frequencies again and really hear them, the lost chord will ring out into the darkest night or the most daunting wilderness. Then you can know that ultimately all is well, all is whole. In the underlying harmony of the universe, that supports you and your part in it. Harmony does not mean giving in to others' whims, always chasing their squirrels and losing the scent of your own essence in the process. Balance does not mean struggling to maintain a constant juggling and act in which you're left pawing the air while the, draw, the balls drop. There will always be balls to drop. Yeah, this is interesting. Here's another bone to chew on. That's why I love this deck. It literally says another bone to chew on. So more food for thought, right? Is there something in your life you need to let go of now in order to gain more peace and harmony? Is there a missing note that if added would really enrich you and perhaps others? Take some time to write down what you can release and then release it. Or write down those things that are missing and develop a step-by-step -step plan to make steady progress toward bringing more of them into your life. Then you'll be swinging with a chorus and playing with a full band in your everyday life. Yeah, I just, you know, whether it's real or not, I, I get the sense that you might feel like something is lacking in your life, um, that there's something missing, and maybe it's been missing for quite some time. Oh, I just realized we have a blue card in here. Well, I'm gonna leave it in here. Um, Maybe something, you feel like something is missing in your life. Maybe you're ready to create from a place of deep wisdom and experience something with far lasting reaches into the future. Maybe you're not quite sure how to get there. Could also be that you're, there's a need to communicate with others whether that's spirit or literally others. Maybe communications are off. Mm. I f I'm feeling a lot of different energies with this particular group of charms, the dice, and the cards. So let's ask spirit for clarity with the tarot. For group one spirit, thank you. Ten of swords, yeah, something's done. 
something from the past I feel is completely done. It's coming to its natural conclusion or now the process is yeah, it's a natural process of conclusion or a natural conclusion, a natural ending, something that maybe you've been anticipating for a while. We have the Ace of Wands. This is great because this is new energy and I feel this is connected to the Salamander of creativity. Do you know what I feel like here? I feel like you've released something. And actually what I feel like you've released is disharmony. You might have let go of a relationship or, or a creative project or a venture or um, something you were working on with others. It might be that it, it wrapped up, it, it reached its natural conclusion, but I do feel this sense of release. And with it, this new energy, vitality, creativity, perhaps a new opportunity coming in. Oh, I'm going to have to get the uh, the book out. This, I see. Well, how about I show you? I love Patrick Valenza's artwork. It's so provocative. We see the devil, and he looks like he's swallowed the moon, or he has the moon in his belly, and then we have these, if you look, this almost looks like a full moon. These look like quarter moons. These are angels. What I get from this, without pulling the card out just yet, they're all praying for something. I feel like this is asking you to draw upon your emotional, sensitive, psychic energies. This is actually the interloper. And it's represented by number five. It's a treacherous demon attempts to blend in with a trio of devout angels. Although the demon vows to behave, his presence within the group will undoubtedly undermine their righteous efforts. Oh, okay. I felt like you needed to, to rely on your emotions and psychic sensitivity and psychic energies, like your intuition. This makes sense why I was getting that, because this is the, the potential of a fake friend in, in your environment. Someone that appears to be true but is false someone who might be someone or something that might be trying to hoodwink you into believing one thing is true when actually the opposite is and also um, this is trouble in disguise overlooking an obvious problem to keep up appearances so yeah it could be even um, Maybe this offer is going to be too good to be true. Maybe that's what you're thinking and it might actually be true. Maybe some offer coming in. It's interesting because we have the Three of Swords. Well, we all know that the Three of Swords is some painful truth. It's something that cuts into our heart. I do feel like this is about friendships. I felt like this was communication, that there's something that is disharmony, uh, is not harmonious between you and others. I felt this need that you need to speak up. Coming back, this also represents bold new ideas, flourishing growth, creative inspiration, spontaneity, a fiery passion, unlimited potential awaits, and fertility. Is it possible, I wonder, that something wasn't quite right in your life it something was you felt something was missing you felt you've been waiting you've been waiting for the right time you felt that maybe something was far in the future that you've wrapped up something that has been because when I think far, that can be far in the future, it can be far in the past, it can be far to either direction of your side, right? It's just, it's something that isn't here in the tangible. Because we have the Ten of Swords, I do feel like this might be something and the time of, the time and 2007 and quarter, right? Four. I feel like this is something that's been lingering for a while. And I feel like it's wrapped up and here you have this new energy you have this, it almost feel, feels like you get a new lease on life. Or something, someone or something comes in 
But like I said, I don't know if this is you. Because of what's happened here, you don't feel like you fit in. Even though this says about false friends, it could just be that you just don't feel like you fit in. Maybe you feel a bit rebellious or it could also be that when I think of the devil card, this represents Capricorn, the 10th house, fame, ambition, your status in life, your finances, uh, old belief systems, traditional belief systems that have been passed down. It's about career, reputation, status. I do feel like you might not feel like you fit into whatever this new, and I feel like it's a lingering residue from here. This might be the painful truth. Maybe there was something in your past here where you didn't feel like you fit in there either. Maybe this is about where do you belong? I believe that you are going to get a, an epiphany, a realization. It might cut to the core of you. I want to say this feels like misfit energy, that you're just not, and I use this word lightly, you're not normal, right? And thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that because normal people are all about fitting in and surrendering their uniqueness so that they are received and they're about bending and folding and stapling themselves so that they're accepted. If you really think about what a reputation is and fame, it has really nothing to do with you and everything to do with everyone else. People make you famous because they elevate you onto this public stage or this public pedestal, whether you're worthy or, of it or not. And the minute they decide that you're not worthy of it anymore, they pull it out from under your feet. So this idea really has little to do with you your public image because it's more about what the public decide of you. So in that respect, I do feel like if you've been feeling challenged in any way or something just isn't quite aligned is what I, I get with this, it's not quite aligned, let that go because this is about endings and releasing. This is almost like full moon energy. Get rid of it. Release it, right? It's finally culminated to the point where you can release it, hence this new beginning. But recognize that you really are an eclectic, unique individual. And it doesn't mean you're bad and everyone else is good because you look different and you think different and you behave different. What I get from this card is I get the sense that you see everything that you are. You're good, you're bad, you're ugly, you're sweet, you're sour. And you're okay with it, but sometimes you feel like you have to people please and acquiesce and maybe not speak up so that you can please other people and fit into the crowd. And this could be the painful truth that you're about to come into. So I like to say that this is Cinderella meets Prince Charles and this is her happily ever after, but aren't you curious what their life looks like the next day? I am. That's why I like to pull another card. Yeah. <laughs> Be you. Be you. If you are the the sort of person that your reputation is important to you, your status, work is important to you, material possessions are important to you, your money, career, fame is important to you, just be honest with yourself because in doing that, I'm just going to pull more information for this card. In doing that, I feel like you're going to actually be more in harmony, more aligned with others. So this says, the insidious devil makes his way along a scorched path, looking to bind humanity with lies and false promises. Comprised of multiple creatures, he is a master of deception and trickery. This is bondage, servitude, materialism, earthly pleasures at a cost, dark fantasy, sexuality, succumbing to temptation, seduction, addiction, or dependency. Now, I am going to go back 
for a moment and talk a little bit more about what I was initially vibing. I felt like this was relationship, especially when I got the harmony off key. I felt like in the past, uh, there was something about you not speaking up. I do feel like you've gone through some sort of transformation. I do feel like some new energy is coming in. It might be a group. Okay, and this also talked about perhaps a fake friend. So I'm going to read the other aspect of this as I'm feeling it and hearing it in my ear and sensing it, is that you may actually be a codependent person. You might be. And you may also, um, because of that, not speak your truths, not be real in the presence of others. It could be that you don't like being alone. Now it's interesting because I want to go back to this for a moment because I feel like this is key. This is time. This is transformation. And by the way, the devil rules time far. That's to do with time as well. Quarter. That's to do, you know, think of a quarter of a day, a quarter of a year, a quarter of a month. That also has to do with time. We have some wisdom in this though some in incredible wisdom and strength and maturity and power and we have this creative sexual life force energy of transformation and regeneration so is it possible i'm going to pose this that you've known this about yourself or someone else in your life that something, and chances are if someone in your life is, if you have someone in your life that's codependent, you are also codependent. There's a role you're playing of codependency in that relationship. I think that's this painful truth. I think this painful truth is something that you haven't, you felt it in your life, something's been off, it's reaching a natural conclusion, and I think what's happening is it's revealing itself at this time to you. That's what I'm getting from this. I feel like it's about to be revealed. I said this feels like full moon energy. It's the revealing of something, and with that, the natural conclusion and the need to release, and what, what is it describing? Because this is the overarching energy or theme of this. What is it describing? you don't feel like you fit in, you feel like you have to be fake, or someone in your circle isn't fitting in. There could be a sense of righteousness here, self-righteousness, piousness, pride, spiritual pride. You might feel like a wolf in sheep's clothing, and it's because maybe either you're codependent or you're attracting codependent people, places, things but it's simply to show you that there's something, some lie, this is like a lie attached to a truth, there's some lie within yourself about your power, about your creativity, maybe about time and about your status and reputation. Maybe you really are this energy, but you believe yourself to be this. And what I get is there needs to be a severance. You need to sever yourself from this energy Codependency tends to get demonized when I don't think it needs to be. I think that's just ignorance that demonizes it. Codependency is just a lack of awareness and a suppression and a denial of truth of one's own power. And perhaps even because this talks about traditions and values and, and thing, lessons that you've been taught, education that you've been taught since you were a child, this is the influence of the father. Actually, it's the father and the influence of the mother. So this is about, because it's connected to the fourth house, it's the fourth and the tenth house. And so this is about root, root education, root values, things that you learned in your primitive, uh, primary early years. And it could be that you may have been shown certain things that were not true about you it may have been true for other people, but it wasn't true about you, but you took that energy on and you've been living it. And so this might have a lot to do with power and, and 
and your place in the world. And I did feel like in here, like there was this, you don't know where you belong. You don't know where you fit in. But here's the thing, you're not supposed to fit in. You're su simply supposed to be you and attract people that are of the same vibration and frequency as you. And with that, situations, opportunities, money, events, that's all part of the attraction cycle. I do feel like you're trying to fit in. And what I get from this is there's a need to just sever that and own up to this power that you are. I mean, in all reality, the devil is of great power. If you think about the power to tempt people into believing lies as truth, there's great power in that. Give up self-deception of your power because that's the only thing when you recognize your power you go from this to this or a blend of this right you're not good or bad you're both you're sweet and sour you're good and bad you're beautiful and ugly you're top and bottom you're upward and downward you're everything and so if you have a moment where you don't fit in so be it maybe other people are self-elevating and they're looking at you like you're or you are thinking that they're more elevated and you're not, right? <laughs> what I get from this is the painful truth is recognize that you are a powerful force, but that the only difference between this energy and this energy is that this has been an erroneous belief that you've allowed yourself to believe about yourself. Now, I do want to go back even a little bit more and talk about this as the tenth house. Because we have time, because we have quarter, we have small change with the potential to be big, we have the creative sexual life force energy, regeneration energy of the salamander. And this can be talking about regeneration of creativity, the regeneration of finances, of career, of age, of knowledge, of wisdom, because that's all contained within time. Something is disharmonious, it's not quite aligned, and there's a natural conclusion and release of this. I almost feel like there can be some insight with this. Remember, I said this represents also the full moon, which can, it shed, it's a little bit of confusion, but it requires that you rely on your intuition, your, psychic, and I did say that about this in here, your psychic, spidey, emotional, sensi um, psychic sensitivity energy, which I feel brings a natural conclusion to whatever was out of alignment to do with creativity, money, time, education, and beauty. This might even still be the lingering effects of COVID. And so the ability to start again, right? this infusion of new ideas and opportunities and energy and vitality and sexual creative life force energy. And because we have the salamander and the ace, this is, I said, regenerative, regenerative, restorative. This can talk about healing, healing some past disharmony whereby you didn't feel like you fit in or whereby in order to get your reputation, your claim, your status, your finances, your career, your education, you, you felt like you had to look like, think like, actually look like and behave like other people or other situations. It's almost like, like I said, you had to bend, fold and staple yourself in order to fit in. And I feel like this, ha this hasn't really led to a harmony either. So let's not repeat this cycle. Let's acknowledge the painful truth that your ability to create coming back to this because you're not creating in the spirit, spiritual realm. You're creating here in the material realm. That's what the devil represents, the material realm. Yes, you are a spirit being, but the only way you manifest is if you acknowledge and adhere to the rules to some degree or at least create new rules on the material realm. There are actual laws that govern the material realm. Time is one of them. Linear time. Real time is not like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, around the, that way. 
it doesn't go cyclical. It's kind of like everything all at once. That said, if you haven't been able to really manifest a career, then I think <laughs> I think what you what this is saying is you need to get out of this thinking that you need to be incredibly spiritual and pious because there's a belief with this that in order to be spiritual you have to be poor and I don't feel like you want to be poor not mentally, not emotionally, not physically, not sexually, not financially and I feel like you actually need to go after your material desires. I know that's going to sound really strange but that's what I'm getting from this and it doesn't mean if you notice there's a full moon, there's the moon again you're still allowing yourself to be guided by spirit your psychic spidey intuitive emotional energies. It's not like you're not feeling and you're not thinking and, and that you're not worthy. But I think you need to get real. You might have learned that you have to be a really good person in order for people to like you, in order to get a good career, in order to be thought of as beautiful. When in reality, just be you. And it's okay to desire and to bind yourself to a career, to a job, to people that you love, to material things. Money is not evil. Material things are not evil. It's the love of those things in the Bible, according to the Bible, that is evil. So you're here to experience abundance, material abundance. I think what the Bible is trying to say is when you put material things, money, relationships, etc., above God, that's when you are a fallen angel. You fall from the grace of the eyes of God, right? But you're actually here to experience these things, to attach. How can you detach until you first attach? So I was talking about codependency, and that's why I think sometimes it gets demonized erroneously. We need to attach. This whole material realm is about attaching. But then at some point, you have to come into your own identity, and you have to detach from others and stop trying to fit in and allow yourself a little bit of difference of space or space of difference between you and others. And you have to learn to be okay with that. And you have to be okay that not everyone's going to like you or love you, but that's because they're all in a group think tank. So, so what? Let them be in their group think tank. If you think differently, just honor you in that and let them be to themselves. Maybe they're on the right path for them, but if you're faking it, if you're giving up, if you're bending, stapling, and folding everything that is real about you in order to be accepted, you're the one that's doing the greatest disservice to you. I always, you know, as a woman, I, I tend, tend to think of the demon as my inner bitch. And sometimes I need to bring out my inner bitch because it creates boundaries. I'm not going to speak lies. I'm going to speak truth, but I'm probably going to, the way that I speak it, it might be ugly to others and harmful to others, but I have to say it because that's me respecting me. I'm not, I don't have to speak perfectly in order for other people to hear me. Yeah, it might hurt. And what others say about me might hurt because this is hurt and painful truths. But the beautiful thing about truth is it sets you free of all the deceptions. So if you're a little codependent right now, maybe that's because that's the energy you need to be in. You need to attach to people, to things, to careers, to money, so that you can understand why it's so important to you. And I think once you've understood why it's so important to you, and once you step into this real authoritative wisdom energy, I think that's when you'll be able to let go what you need to let go of. Your self-deceptions, the lies you tell yourself and others in order to fit in. That's what I'm getting from this reading. So whether this is a relationship, a career, or just various areas of your life, please know that this is the path that you're on, and be kind to yourself. We all have to attach because we're born and raised to attach. You know, my son, my mother, my father, my siblings, my friend, my neighbor, my teacher, everything is about possession. Mine, mine, mine. That's what this is about my community, my thoughts, my behaviors, 
And what's the opposite of that? You, right? And there's the blame. You. If it's not about me because everything about me is good and right, then, you know, you are making me feel like a bad person because I don't fit in. So <laughs> the journey that I feel like you're on here is a journey of transformation, of deeper education, of wisdom, of recognizing your attachments, of letting go of this need to fit in, because this is not harmonious to you and is not harmonious to your social circle. You have to be true to yourself. And if that means you need to find a different social circle instead of pretending that you know, you're know you angelic, if your social circle is three other demons, then so be it. That's not to say you can't learn from difference. In fact, usually we do learn from difference and from different. In the end, you need to be real to yourself, to your desires, to your passions. If you have some creative energy about you that you want to manifest, because this is the opportunity of manifesting, then be true to yourself and do it your way. And forget about whether it's the right way or whether it'll be socially accepted. It's not going to be socially accepted by everyone. No one person can be everything to all people. There's going to be people that don't like you for this, that, and other reasons that probably have nothing to do with you and everything to do with the other person. And this also applies to you with others. So like I said, I do feel like you're coming into a fullness of yourself, a fullness of awareness of yourself. If you have felt that things aren't aligned, that things have been falling through the cracks, that things aren't working out, that you don't have enough time for something, it's not about that. It's about you being true to you and letting the truth of that set you free. Because I do feel like you have an ability to be a powerful manifester in the material realm. And if you do feel like you want to be this angel and give up this, what the devil represents, you want to be more spiritual and let go of the material, you will when you die because the last attachment you have will be your body. Your body is a sacred vessel and it's okay to attach to it. And you have a lifetime to detach from things. In my own life, I know that until you truly attach, you can't truly know joy. And then when you surrender all that attachment, the joy multiplies. But that's a process and a journey. And it might take a long time for you to get there. So be okay with that. Okay, well, I think I should stop speaking. That's what I have for you, Group 1. Uh, if you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, New Moon, Full Moon, Mercury, Retrograde, or any other time that Spirit tells me to. Wishing you great success, and with that, I will now move to Group 2. Hello, Group 2. I have the fan on overhead because it's incredibly hot in here, so I hope it's not going to be too loud and that you're going to hear me okay. I went ahead and pulled your charms and your dice for this particular reading. And what you have is the elephant head. This is uh, protection, wisdom, infinity, so eternal life. It's uh, memory. And in that it can represent past life and subconscious memory, long-term memory. Uh, it's protection. We have a a piece of a puzzle and it would appear to be the inside piece of a puzzle so I feel like you might be going deep in yourself to discover something um, we have the Canadian dollar it's a loony and, and it's actually on the tails end so not the head but the tail when I think of this um, I get many different messages from this so I'm just going to share it all this kind of reminds me of Rahu and Ketu, Ketu. so the tail of the, um, the moon as opposed to the head. The tail right now is in the sign of Sagittarius, the head is in Gemini, and the tail is where you release and excrete toxins from. Think of your own body, right, like you, your tail, right, your tailbone, it's, it's where you're 
you go pee and you go poo in that area, right? So this is kind of a similar thing. It's things that we excrete out of our life that we let go. Waste, in other words, right? Things that no longer apply to our life. The loon is a beautiful, graceful bird uh, that dives deep, deep in the water. And I was getting that with this here. I feel like you're going deep within yourself. It's associated to water, which is emotions. Um, so I feel like there's some sense of re uh, release, maybe even relief. Um, I'll go more into that. We have a silver spoon, uh, or a spoon and a silver spoon. So this can talk about finances because we also have rat. And when I see that with this, I think of the, the sign of the rat, the Chinese astrology sign of the rat. And the sign of the rat is about prosperity and success. Um, a spoon is also a tool for digging not you know it doesn't puncture it literally scoops up and scoops out yeah breakthrough be bold interesting okay so let's see what else we have for this particular card if I can find it um, if you've Okay, this means breaking out of some former cage, some sort of psychological cage, belief system. Um, it could be a job, a career, a relationship that you're getting out of. Uh, it's interesting because we have release, breakthrough, getting out of, digging deep within yourself. We have success. Yeah, I feel like you've been working very hard at freedom essentially whatever that means for you whether that's uh, a breakthrough in outer conditions or inner conditions um, I feel like you have been um, focusing your attention and action or you're being called to focus your attention and action uh, on s some opportunity is what I feel an opportunity to break out and break through and it's saying be bold so there's a, a certain element of courage that is required in order for you to to do this so whether this is a relationship finances a job career education or a health and weight and fitness program um, just bringing joy into your life community whatever this is for you Okay, we have, yeah, the lightning. Oh, interesting, this almost feels like um, a tower moment. I'll go through this. I haven't used this deck in a while, so we'll find out what all these are. The Hierophant, yeah, mm-hmm. The Star, oh wow, a lot of major arcana. And typically, I am under the impression when I do readings, when I get a lot of major arcana, that this almost feels faded. Like this was part of your life path and your life purpose. It's something that you came in to be and do. And so you may have created situations that felt stifling and powerless, uh, where you might have felt trapped. And the only reason why you did that is so that you could step into your power go deep within yourself to discover your truths, maybe clear up any old past or past life residues, and develop the courage, the fortitude, the strength, and the tenacity to be bold, courageous, and break through certain boundaries that without those situations, circumstances, or people in your life, you may not have been able to, to break through. So the whole purpose of Breakthrough is that <laughs> you created the situation so that you could step into your power. So this is uh, a shepherd gasps in shock as bolts of lightning flash from the sky setting a tree ablaze. Yeah, this is the alternate tower card. Um, unexpected devastation, uncontrollable tragic event, true authority exerting its power over the masses, 
being helpless and at the mercy of a catastrophic situation. So essentially powerlessness, and this is what I was saying, I was, this is what I was feeling. I feel like you, without realizing it, whether it was in this life or a past life, you created a, a situation that you've been experiencing that has made you feel incredibly powerless. The elephant is incredibly powerful. Uh, so is the rat. So is the loon. <laughs> um, and it's almost like you had to be put into a situation and this, you know, you're not alone in this because we do this individually and we also do it as a collective, as a collective humanity. We create these situations so that we can feel so oppressed that we rebel against and break out and break through. We finally get the courage to make change. All humans want complacency and contentment. We all want to feel safe and secure and with that comes complacency and contentment. And yet it's that very complacency and contentment that we desire that is also the thing that, you know, you've probably heard this, um, uh, what is it, something breeds contempt. Uh, essentially, when something becomes too familiar, you end up resenting it or not feeling happy with it. That is the human condition. And the reason it exists is so that we keep striving to create, to transform, to grow, to, to, to create and break limitations. And this is the energy that I feel you're in. It's about breaking these limitations, whether they were imposed by the gods, right? God or the gods. Uh, whether they're uh, astrologically triggered, these events. Whether this is something that you... Um, you created in this lifetime or a past lifetime, it really doesn't matter. And the most important thing is that you are about to, or you're being asked to break through, to be bold and break through this limitation. This is a tower moment. It's to bring enlightenment, awareness to you, to essentially put a fire under your keister to get you going on taking action, to get you out of complacency, to get you out of a comfort zone, to get you out of what's familiar and into something that's unfamiliar because in being in something unfamiliar, whether it's a relationship, a career, a job, a financial situation, whatever, it suddenly bras, brings up from within you these incredibly deep, untapped resources of creativity, creative thinking, creative action, um, emotions of greater compassion, even survival qualities of which, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. That's what I get with this. So regardless of whether this is a relationship or if it's just your day-to-day -day life or if it's a career, a job, your finances, literally the state of the world right now, travel, whatever, just know that you are uh, experiencing <laughs> and I said, I feel like this is faded. It's the work of the God or the gods. There is some divine intervention happening here to help you break out and break through. And it's interesting because here we have the Hierophant, and the Hierophant is about our traditions. Well, it's the whole Tower card is about something happening to help us break through old paradigms, old belief systems, and that's exactly what this represents, belief systems. These are your formal education, institutes, governments, religion, um, the rights and the wrong, the good and the bad. Just think of that, the, the duality of two different, the top, the bottom, the inside, the out. This is th that entire thing that I was saying creates the foundation of every belief system that you have. So look at everything that you've been taught about what's good or right, and everything that you've been taught about what's wrong or bad or good or evil, right? And essentially, 
It's asking you to re-examine your belief system here. It's also, in a sense, asking us to respect the traditional belief systems because we once adhered to them and we had created a situation whereby we realized that they were too rigid, too restrictive, that we needed to change it. Tradition is to be respected because it teaches us what needs to be changed and how far we've come. And there's a lot of things that traditional values and morals that are still very applicable regardless of what else is happening in society and in our lives. So it's the ability to distinguish between what needs to be let go of, what beliefs, what values, what educations, what thoughts, what ideas about status, reputation, fame, relationships, love, caring, kindness, sharing, everything that we've ever been taught about ourselves as humanity. There's some things that we need to keep and some things that we need to toss because you, as you evolve and grow, some things are no longer going to be applicable to your life. This could be talking about a new way of creating finances for yourself or education for yourself a new career for yourself. It's interesting because I like what follows here. We have the star and the three of wands. This is potential. This is potential that requires action and action in the way of planning, visualization, and listening to intuition and taking action on those hunches and intuitive prompts. And here is, when I think of the star, this is the potential of your hopes and dreams and wishes coming true. So, Spirit's telling you to break free from these old paradigms. And it's created a situation in your life, or is about to, that's going to help you examine, I said this is about going deep, examine your belief systems. When we see an inside piece of the puzzle, essentially this is the core. It's not the outer edge, it's the core, right? Going deep within. And because we have money in this and a silver spoon, I do feel like this might have, and the rat, I do feel like this might have to do with your reputation, career, status, fame, your money, your, ed your job, your education, your career, everything that goes around that. Because then from that, you know, that determines the kind of friends that you hang out with, where you live, you know, location, location, because it's based on what you can afford. You hang around certain people based on your social economic circle. It's like everything is based on economics, right? In a sense, it is. That's why in India they have the caste society, because they recognize that. So coming back to the star, uh, this is the traditional star. I want to see what he says here. Now he's high in his tower. We have the tower here, the top um, of the tree. And we have to, I have to point out, <laughs> this is not the tower, it's the tree, which emphasizes it has to do with family beliefs. Family, early childhood is what I feel. Early childhood beliefs. So everything you learn from your family, your early education, so your, um, did they have kindergarten when you were in school? I don't know. Uh, kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, junior years, right? Right up into high school, before you went into college or university. Everything that created your education, everything that you thought was family, the kind of friends that you thought were family, the communities that you thought were family. Uh, I feel like something is being completely shooken up, set on fire, ablazed. It might be a bit shocking, it might feel chaotic, but it's for the purpose and intention of helping you to realize what you truly value, what is of real value versus what you've been led to believe is of value. And coming back here, so the top of the tower has been, or the tree has been, struck 
and yet we have this man up in the top of his tower. He's an astronomer observing the most radiant stars he has ever encountered. And through his meticulous calculations, he was able to predict the exact time and place of the stellar phenomenon. This is a hopeful sign from the heavens. It's synchronicity, a prophecy coming true, a once-in-a-lifetime event and good fortune yet to come. And that's what I feel with this. So this may not feel like it's fortuitous, this whole tower moment and this breaking old paradigms and structures is what I feel like but it's essential because there's something this was all designed by you and Creator whether you did it in this lifetime or it, it was the result of a past lifetime whether this is you personally or whether this is the whole collective you're part of it um, <laughs> there's something better in your future and it's about <laughs> did you have a vision have you been holding on to some hope some dream some wish some desire this star kind of reminds me of the star that was in the hermit's lamp it's this personal truth and it's that's why it's the brightest star in the universe and that's why he's seeing it. He's seeing his own personal truth, his own personal desire that is the most, the strongest desire. You know, we all think that we want this, that, and the other and we often wonder why it's not manifesting. So, for example, maybe you want to have a million dollars and you think that's what your strongest desire is and yet, if you observe yourself, you realize that it's actually a relationship, love, and to love another and to feel love that's your greatest desire. And so you do everything to, to manifest that desire, and in that sometimes you let finances fall by the wayside. I'm just using that as an example. It may not apply to you. I'm just using that to highlight what I'm trying to explain here about your most burning desire. Um, sometimes we put other fake desires in front of it because that's what society tells us to do and that's essentially kind of what this is saying right this is all about society fitting into society but I feel like you are about to embark on manifesting your greatest desire and that's what this has been that's what this the whole thing was designed to do. This current situation, this current chaos was designed to make you go deep within. And I did say, isn't, didn't I say this is the, the star in the hermit's lamp? And it, the hermit's echoed here and going deep. Hence the breakthrough. And having the courage to take the action. And we finally get to the Three of Wands where, is, where essentially you're being told take action plan ahead expand expand your belief system expand your social circle expand your way of thinking the way things should be you know if you're falling into could should would that's this energy what else is possible that's this energy and I feel like spirit is trying to pull you into the what else is possible energy so that you can align to what it is that you've come to truly be. So this is Cinderella meets Prince Charming, right? And they live happily ever after. But haven't you always wondered like what, what happens to them the day after? That's why I pull another card because this is the day after. It's to give a glimpse into what's yet to come as a result of taking this. And it's the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups is a bit of a celebration. It's, it might be a little premature, but it's, I don't feel like it is. I feel like when I see these cards... The celebration is you finally realizing what it is that you truly desire. What's of great value? What is of greatest value to you? Not based on what you're told you should, could, or would be if, right? This is based on your deepest desire. 
And you may have had an inkling of this in your earlier years. You may not have, but you may have. And I do feel with two threes here that the potential of working with others and even maybe forming a, uh, becoming a part of or forming a different community might be part of your, um, I just want to see where this card is. That might be part of what's in store for you is a, a different community. One where um, the relationships are more hom harmonious and they're based on greater truth and I think it's because you see, uh, you see a greater truth within yourself. This could also talk about a happy reunion or a social event or creative, like I said, creative collaborations. I feel like it's bringing you in contact with others that are able, that either have a similar goal in mind. I always think community when I see the threes. Uh, I think communities, I also think of uh, magical manifestations because three is a number of magic. So it's about literally taking the action to manifest what was once invisible, bringing it into form. And a lot of times that does require other people to help us manifest that, even if the only reason why we manifest it is so that other people will buy it. We need people. We need others. To help us manifest. I do feel with the rat, the spoon, the money and seeing the, where this reading is taking you that there is the potential for earnings, for greater earnings, some sort of creative prospect. And you might have been trying to figure this out and I think it's about to be revealed to you and I feel like it's going to lead to emotional ease, some joy, some happiness, a cause for celebration. So that's what I have for you, group two. If you like this reading, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or whenever spirit tells me to. Wishing you great success. And with that, I will now move to group three. Hi, group three. I went ahead and pulled your charms and your dice. You have what appears to be, oh gee, I've had this one before. Um, it could be a ladybird or it could be an angel. Uh, you have a hammer. Looks like you're fastening, putting things in. Actually, I feel like you're busy working, hammering away at something is what I feel. Because we have destiny. I feel like you're, uh, hmm. I'm going to hold off on that one for a second. And you have town. I feel like you're busy working on manifesting your purpose, to be quite honest. Fear. Face the fear. What does that little card, what other message does it have for us? You might consider some form of stress management, which is, which at its base is fear management. Relaxing physical activity or body at rest contradicts fear and releases stress. If you find yourself tuned into the frequency of fear a great deal of time, you may need to learn new tricks to put yourself into a more relaxed state of mind when there's no real immediate danger or threat. Take charge of your own internal fear and how it works so you can move through and beyond fear grabbing all life has to offer. Mm, okay, so maybe you have been working at overcoming fears that you have. Interesting, the word town, small community. small. Maybe you've been working at overcoming your fear of allowing yourself to expand and grow and be bigger. It's 
some people will not put themselves out there for their fear of being seen, of being heard. And even though you may think you want those things, sometimes the fear is so strong and so subtle that you don't even recognize it. And I do feel with the destiny and the angel ladybird that you're being guided to fly, to expand, to, to allow yourself to have a bigger presence in life. Hmm. Spirit, what other message do you have for group three? We have the Four of Cups. This is a deep inward contemplation. This is about looking for value in your life. This is allowing yourself to Evaluate your life to find it where you're truly fully engaged. What draws you emotionally. It's a moment of reflection. Three of Cups. That looks like the Ace of Cups. Isn't that pretty? I like this, there's a lot of cup energy here. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, this is good. Um, the Three of Cups is some sort of reunion or celebration, uh, emotion, excuse me, um, emotional joy. So I feel like, like I said, I feel like you have been working um, diligently, putting in a lot of effort to overcome, to recognize and to overcome places in your mind and, and in, like in your thoughts and emotions where you feel and even your behavior where you behave small. And because I don't think that's what spirit wants you, where want, spirit wants you to stay. I feel like spirit wants you to get out and about and be take up more space in the world and be visible and be heard and be seen. Sometimes you have to create the scenario though so that you feel so stifled, so restricted that you get into that energy of rebellion where you have to break out and break free. And that's what I feel with this. Hence the hammering. You're hammering away at it, right? And in deep contemplation of all these places where you allow fear to dictate your life. And I feel like you're overcoming this. And that's why we have this celebration. Because the celebration is it's the energy of joy and happiness and love. And fear doesn't live in that energy. And we also have the ace, which is new emotional energy, new creative energy, new love, new gratitude, new respect. Uh, respect, appreciation, just think of emotions of everything that encompasses joy. It's being grateful for everything that you are and have and be and do and everything and anyone that is in your life and just being so grateful for all of that and being grateful for everything that your life is. The people, the events, the places, everything. Even all the things that in the past that led you to be fearful it's about having a respect and, and recognizing the role that served in your life and how it helped you to get to the person that you are today. I feel like you're about to transform this energy. And here's this hammer about work and work and work. And, and this is all about work and work and work and putting in the effort. And there's an element of time in this and there's an element of some internal pressure or external pressure. It's just a, an energy that propels you. It can either put you back into the energy of fear, because it's that fear of not meeting the timeline, right? 
I'm not having something done in time at the right time at the agreed upon time but it can also be this kind of nervous energy that you need to direct into some sort of creative venture that whether it's a project a hobby um, socializing a new relationship with someone or something and it just you want to put your energy into it because it feels so good to put your energy into that and because you're seeing things manifest as a result so I call this the Cinderella meets Prince Charming and they live happily ever after when I do a reading like this but don't you always want to know the next day like what happens with Prince Charming and Cinderella I do and that's why I pull a, another card this is your reading but I kind of want to see what what's this is setting up for as the next energy and it's the high priestess so it's it's like you tap into this incredible reserve of subconscious I want to say hidden or occult because occult simply means hidden some hidden information within yourself hidden emotions hidden information uh, that um, and I'm just gonna see what else uh, Patrick Belenza talks about with this card but essentially it's about bringing something from the unknown the invisible into the tangible where you can see it feel it sense it smell it know it um, yeah this is about focusing inward knowledge a passion for learning feminine wisdom and power sacred secrets keen intuition and introspection when I see this reading in particular when I see the ace of cups the eight of pentacles and the high priestess I feel like you are about to manifest I think you're about to manifest something in your life whether it's within yourself or a pro something tangible whether it's a relationship or a project or a creative money something I feel like this is more about you in your psychic sensitivities your knowing your hunches your intuition your sense of power and empowerment and what I feel is you've been working putting in so much time and energy and I feel like spirits guiding you out of this smallness out of this smallness that was born out of fear and out of a sense of complacency even comfortableness in a sense and I feel like it, it this smallness and you feeling this fear of either being invisible and or also being visible too visible right it puts you into this inward energy of deep contemplation and I think it helped you to release something or to, or to at least realize something it puts you back into contact with maybe old emotions or old people friends uh, situations from the past that allowed you to realize something that allowed you then to also feel a little bit happier and to celebrate to feel more joyful to reconnect and this is increasing or brought in a brand new energy it's like even more joy and I feel like you are it's almost like because of this new energy it almost feels to me like it was the impetus that you needed the fire that you needed to really take action and, and take bold action is what I want to say and I feel like you might be you might be moving into the energy of teacher you might be offered some sort of mentorship or teacher position whether it's 
just someone comes to you for advice, because that, in a sense, is mentorship and teaching, or it's a, it was something to do with your community, your family, your job, your career, where suddenly you're seen and heard and you have a lot of wisdom to share and offer. And I do feel like it brings you some recognition. And I feel like this is not coincidentally where you end up is something that you once feared, but once you're here, it's so you. Like you're completely in your element, you're completely in your stride. And why? Because this is your destiny. Well, okay, that's what I have for you, Group 3. Uh, if you like this reading, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury, at your greater, whenever Spirit tells me to. Wishing you great success, and with that, I will move to group four. Hi, group four. I went ahead and pulled your charms and your dice off camera, and this one kept trying to get away from me, and it says expand. And it makes sense because you have the chain. This is something that's binding. It's, it's connected. I feel like you need to expand your connections. I feel like you need to expand beyond what you have bound yourself to companionship through thick and thin yeah you might need to expand your social circles um, you might need to expand your sense of loyalty this is about friendship and companionship is friendship so yeah it's about expanding your social circle even expanding the people that you bring into your life and trust and that the people and things that you bring into your life and where you give your energy and your emotions your th and you put value to and that you invest your time, energy and love into. Because it brings you out of yourself and can literally expand your thoughts, your emotions, it can take you on larger and longer geographical journeys. Uh, it can expand your education, your finances, everything about your life. So yeah, I do feel like you're being asked to expand your social circles, your friendships. Who and what you let into your life. Okay. Yep, new opportunities coming in. That's great. New energy, new opportunity, um, new ideas, uh, new creative ventures, new communities, new friendships. And the tower, uh, this could bring some sort of change. Um, definitely going to bring change. Um, might feel a little disruptive or chaotic in the beginning. But it's nice because we have some clarity. Uh, we have decisive action, um, overcoming fear, and brand new beginnings. And you have all the tools and the resources and skills to make this happen. I just want to see what else we have for these cards. Um, the magician developing skills exploring unique abilities potential manifestation resourcefulness I just want to see what else he says about the page of swords uh, where are we here page oh here we go um, yeah this talks about being in training oh, okay well that makes sense being in training, um, eager to learn, trial and error, especially after this change, a quick study, developing your intellect. Yeah, so I feel like by allowing yourself to expand who and what you bring into your life and where you place your loyalties, 
it invites this new opportunity that definitely creates change because it puts you in a whole new cycle of learning and gives you greater clarity and skill and which then you can then create whatever you desire and exponentially more um, not only in your own life but for others as well when I look at this reading, I see Cinderella meets Prince Charming and then they live happily ever after, right? But I always want to know, like, what happens the next day after they've, you know, gone into the, the blue? Which is why I pull another card, because I kind of want to get a glimpse into what happens after this. Oh, this is beautiful. We have the Queen of Cups. This is... Um, an increase in joy, in psychic sensitivity, in love, in gratitude, um, in your psychic sensitivities, um, emotional maturity, feeling incredibly generous, in, and coming back here with the learning and the skill and taking action on that. This is also about just being in this incredible creative flow. So by expanding your social circle, whether that's, you know, an online or literally in your tangible life, you know, once lockdowns are all done, because it feels like the whole world is starting to open up. And that's what I feel like this this is referring to in your personal life get out is what the world's saying get out and the world the world and this reading is saying get out and expand go for drives go to different places where you never would have gone before if you're online go look at expand your mind with things that you never were considered uh, that you never inter were considering uh, or that you that were of interest to you in past allow these things uh, to to capture your imagination in your mind allow them in because this all everything new it's new ideas new um, energy new resources new education it can be new job opportunities or creative opportunities or um, and definitely it brings change and like I said it's just leading to exponentially expanding pretty much everything in your life but in particular it's expanding your mind it's expanding your skill set it's expanding your abilities and your resources because this is talking about having all the resources like all of your resources ex exponentially expand and it makes you a much more rounded mature person which allows you to be more generous and in a creative flow <sighs> wow that's a beautiful reading that's what i have for you group four thanks for letting me do your reading if you like please like share subscribe hit the notification bell set it to all i put out new content every sunday tuesday thursday new moon full moon mercury retrograde or whenever spirit tells me to wishing you great success and with that i will now move to group five hi group five i went ahead and pulled your charms and your dice off camera you have the little mouse and you have the word oceans interesting kind of a a dichotomy here because you have something really small like a mouse and so something as vast as the oceans uh, this is about um, emotions memory subconscious uh, literally oceans water uh, vastness temperatures in this I'm not sure spirit saying temperature I would have never thought of that but um, and also flow of ideas and that's kind of what the mouse reminds me of it's it's about the mind it's about you know the mouse goes through the the puzzles it's the maze right and it learns as it goes through these mazes um, you might be navigating the maze of your emotions I'm not too sure but let's see what we have here success honor your gifts 
Okay, so let's, let's see if there's some other message in here with this card. When you decide to put your paws forward and make a greater commitment to success, your inner bully dog may show up. He's the one responsible for all those voices barking at you saying, you're not ready, you can't do this, you're not worth it. Or when you've already achieved success, the inner bully dog may say you cheated or you're a fraud or, you know, yeah, I'm not worth this. Um, people are going to find me out. Replace this with an inner loyal shepherd who is de dedicated to your success and can help you muzzle those voices of self-doubt. When you've rested in your comfy bed for a while basking in the glory of success, what might be your next movement forward? As the saying goes, nothing succeeds like success. You may be on a roll instead of ready to roll over. Whatever it is, your next leap is, a higher, is from a higher platform and your new confidence and courage can now lift you to a new level in your life's success. So, yeah, okay. Um, interesting, right? Oceans are vastness. How deep and how vast do your, do your, does your success go? Uh, I almost I'm hearing spirit say <laughs> are you willing to are you willing to stay small or are you willing to flow and become exponentially more hmm interesting okay what other message do you have for group five spirit and are you willing to travel the maze is what I hear you have the three of cups okay so yeah I feel like you've received some sort of success um, there's a cause for celebration. It might be reconnecting with uh, old friends or old acquaintances. We have the Five of Wands. This is about, you know, you being able to um, create situations as well as when situations are presented to you that bring out qualities within yourself uh, that lead to even greater success and those qualities can be mental emotional physical spiritual financial every way in life these different qualities and yeah it's taking on this brand new journey these are both about new journeys and with that is coming greater um, balance, it's bringing balance and control, uh, harmony into your life. Uh, I feel like you're directing your success is what Spirit is saying. And that kind of makes sense now with this. This is about vastness and your emotions, right? And your intuition. And this is about your mind. And it could be that they're working in harmony that they're feeding each other in a sense or they're coexisting and maybe that is your greatest success and maybe this is what's leading to joy and a sense of uh, celebration because that's you know we don't celebrate when we're mad and angry we celebrate usually when we feel joyful and happy and we've overcome something or we've you know met a fear uh, and overcome that fear. Um, we're bigger than that fear, right? And I do feel like the emotions are, and your psychic energies are a lot larger than your lower mind, your lower thinking mind. Um, whatever this is, I feel like you just keep ch challenging yourself is essentially what I'm getting. You keep challenging yourself and because you're willing to be in this energy, the universe presents you with things that you just, they feel like challenges and obstacles. And, but for you, it's just an opportunity to, to discover more about yourself, to discover more about patience, like qualities of yourself and thoughts and emotions and literally physical. What am I physically capable of doing? I think this helps you to also respect real limitations versus perceived limitations. 
and I think it gives you a greater sense of awareness of yourself and that's why the oceans is so big right and like I said this brings you to the fool which is uh, breaking out of your comfort zone embarking on new challenges seeking out your potential relying on your instincts faith in your own abilities and that's what I was saying I, I feel like this it's you either create these situations or the universe does it on your behalf and it doesn't feel like a burden it's just for you it's just an opportunity right you have a good frame of mind is what I want to say the way you see life it's not that you don't get uh, overwhelmed at times but somehow you rise above that I think it's because you allow yourself to be in a state of flow. I also feel like you're analytical, or at least introspective. Yeah, spirits gave me a more of an introspective. You're introspective. And I feel like you're willing to, to uh, uh, on one hand, allow yourself feel, to feel comfortable, but on the other hand, you're also willing to move out of your comfort zone and that's why this energy comes in because you are willing to receive it so that you can grow I feel like you want to keep growing I feel like that's important for you is to keep growing and expanding and embarking on new challenges and new horizons this is an intense sense of purpose making progress taking the required action needed to achieve a worthy goal focus unwavering willpower a success oriented mindset and taking charge and leading the way forward yeah it's like you get giggles and kicks out of all your successes is what I feel <laughs> you just have a really good mindset it's everything for you is an opportunity and you can turn a negative into a positive almost just like that so this is Cinderella meets Prince Charming they go through their journey and then they get married and live happily ever after but don't you want to know what happens to Prince Charles sorry Prince Charming and Cinderella the next day I do and that's why I like to pull another card because I want to get a glimpse into what happens after this and what happens after this is some incredible epiphany awareness change you're creating change and it happens and it's illuminating and electrifying and a little destabilizing but I feel like it's empowering for you and it's exciting for you and I feel like it's dare I say it I feel like it's one of your greater challenges to bring out even more qualities of you that go around this successful mindset yeah this this feels like a really positive card where it is right here in this particular reading it just you're moving towards greater change and creativity and success and that's exactly what this is revealing so whatever this is in your life whether it's a relationship a job education career whether it's about you know moving uh, literally geography uh, whether it's um, communities whatever finances you have a good mindset and you like to be challenged and you're setting your pathway for an even greater challenge a great challenge and for you remember I said challenge is just another word for opportunity there's a great opportunity coming in for you and it has the potential to create great change in your life and I feel like this will be exponentially doubled if not tripled that is what I have for you group 5 if you like this reading please like share subscribe hit the notification bell set it to all I put out new content every Sunday Tuesday Thursday new moon full moon mercury retrograde or whenever spirit tells me to wishing you great success and until I see you in a future video thanks for watching ciao for now